Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming at you with another video. All right, so uh, the Los Angeles Lakers waived Cole Swider today and uh, are going to give their two-way contract to Alex Fudge. Um, I appreciate his Swider, man. You know, he was a good player for us uh, in the G League. Uh, South Bay Lakers played some good ball for us last year. He was a real promising rookie, but unfortunately, I think it was a stress fra fracture or some something of that nature uh, that really derailed his rookie season. And um, unfortunately, he came into uh, summer league not looking his best. Uh, he was he was able to contribute. You could tell he could play at a high level, but he just looked as if he was really struggling out there physically to kind of keep up with the talent around him. Uh, he has an excellent ability to hit shots and uh, really did contribute to the boards and, and, and a lot of of what we were hoping to see from him in a positive light ultimately came to pass in the later games in the playoff in the summer league. But uh, unfortunately, uh, Alex Fudge is just a, a, a talent that you don't want to pass up on if you're the LA Lakers. Uh, we're looking for high level talent, upside players with long arms, guys are going to fit the next era. And Alex Fudge looks like he's going to be a player. <clears throat> he really does. So uh, I, I don't think the Lakers got rid of Cole Swider because they were as down on Cole Swider more so than I think it's because they were more so really up on Alex Fudge. So I think that's what it really came down to. Uh, you can only have three of those uh, two ways, and we're very, very excited about the other guys that we brought on, uh, Colin Castleton and, of course, uh, Des Moines Hodge. So it, it becomes a situation where somebody has to go, and unfortunately, Cole Swider's the guy that we chose. But uh, I think he has a future in this league so long as he just works on his conditioning. Uh, there are players out there that have been able to make careers for themselves without – uh, being overly athletic, and I think he could be one of those guys. He'll find himself somewhere, and when he does, he's going to show him he's a high-level player who can score a lot of points. Uh, so I know that he's going to have to have some help on the defensive end. I'd love to see him playing with a lot of athletes. Let him be the most elite, uh, be the least athletic player on the team that he goes to. And if that's the case, he can really be an asset to it. Um, modern day stretching the floor kind of guy. I'm thinking about players that have played over the years um you know, Channing Fry guys like that of that elk uh not really sure my mind is not really taking me to who who I would compare him to per se but that's the type of role that I think he can carve out for himself uh because he's an uber talented shooter like way out of control how talented he is as it pertains to shooting as it pertains to shooting from behind the arc so uh some team is going to get him quickly too a team like milwaukee should sign him now uh phoenix too like he's a weapon and i understand this so um that's really what it comes down to you, you let a good player go but you understand that you also signed on a player that you should likely have prioritized in the manner that you did so i'm definitely happy with the lakers and what they've done here it may not sound like i am because i i do appreciate cole swider as a prospect but they only allow us three two ways which we're proud of has increased from two but needs to increase from there uh, and young talent will have to leave teams because it hasn't yet done so. So hopefully this collective bargaining agreement will help us, um, you know, kind of learn from the flaws within itself and allow for uh, this to never happen again. Allow for even more two ways. See, that is a, something that is a prelude to what could be coming more so uh, going forward because there's more and more high level talent that is uh, coming into this game. You know, I think... I think listening to Jaron Jackson put a stamp of approval on NBA 2K uh, as a means of helping him with his timing blocking shots can speak to just the overall authenticity that prospects are able to engage in with these games, for which I would imagine a good portion of these prospects are players who have more or less uh, grown up playing 2K or, or grown up playing these type of games. And so... If I'm to look at that and hold it as a means of saying it's really truly teaching players how to play NBA basketball at a certain pace or timing or what have you, teaching them how to strategize and think strategy or what have you, if I'm to truly believe that, then I have to assume that it's very important that we look at all the field of prospects that are coming and just assume they're all going to be good enough to play. They're going to be good enough to play at this level. They're going to have a certain level of understanding based on the speed that they're going to be able to study from not only playing the game itself, but also being able to have the simulation of timing at home in their households and, and, and in their devices. So 
that is something that I take very seriously and am telling everybody that I think there's going to be more productive and producing players coming out of nowhere than ever before because everybody's connected to this game and everybody's connected to the game itself because of it. And so I tell y'all, a lot of what I talk about on this channel is because I played so many hours of that game over the years. Um, it gave me so much of understanding of these rosters, gave me so much of an understanding of how to... <clears throat> how to view certain uh, responsibilities players have from a first person perspective from position to position to position you know it's a lot of stuff that you it just trains you it does it really does train a modern uh novice uh how to kind of maneuver in the, in the game of basketball in certain ways through the nba and so as i look at what i'm seeing here i'm like yo that, that holds weight with me i think that now we have to start looking at these young players and saying yo everybody can pretty much come in if they're a professional player and do something to contribute to the sport itself, they, the, the, the uh, transition from, from, from uh, AAU to the NBA, I don't think it's going to be as difficult on the court as it has been in the past generations for different various superstars and various different levels of talent. They just, they're going to be playing with higher level guys. They're going to be playing at a level that allows them to be good enough to play in your league sooner is what I'm essentially saying. Guys are going to be able to, if they're at a physical level, you're going to start seeing guys who are 17 that you're going to be like, yo, he's ready. 16, he's ready. It's going to start happening because their body's going to get more and more structured, more and more evolved, so to speak. And then their minds and their, their brains are going to be ready for the on-court stuff. Now, the off-the-court stuff, absolutely not. <laughs> you don't have to guide them. But I can see they're going to want to lower the, the age even more so, uh, in, in my opinion, going forward. They are. They're going to want to lower that age from 18 to lower than that. And so I think it can start getting a little tricky when you start having kids playing against grown men, so to speak, especially when you start talking about labor laws and all that type of stuff, which can be really, really tricky. But I just see an evolution of, of, of athlete that's coming to where you're going to want to push the old guys out unless they have a longevity, which is possible, right? They last longer or what have you. But you're going to want to see those players come in who are already ready to go. Um, you're going to want to see them play. Sooner, people are going to want to pay to see some of these prospects that I think are going to be on the way. Uh, sooner than, than maybe the NBA uh, is going to be with these rules allowing them to come into the league. So maybe I'm way ahead of my time when I think like this, but it's just something I see. The evolution of the game is making it so that these guys are more equipped mentally and physically to play at this level. Probably more equipped to play against grown men from previous generations, so to speak. Guys like... <laughs> who are 30 and 31, they probably more equipped to play against grown men than generations past who were their same age in comparison to such. So I'm telling y'all, it's, it's going to get more and more Scoot Hendersons coming, more and more Web Banyamas, tall guys, long guys, athletes, whiz kid, Chris Paul, like guards, they're coming. And so that's what I want to tell people. The expansion is essential. I don't know how soon, I don't have that math in my head at all, but they've got to expand this from 30 to something more teams as far as that's concerned so that's my thought man that's where all of this is taking me uh cole swatter if, if he if they did have expansion obviously he'd have a he would have an opportunity already you know he'd, he'd be able to get on the team quickly i believe with his shooting ability uh but you know he's got the he's got the grind in the g league and i think the good thing about the g league is it is also expanding new teams are starting to get teams so to speak new farm clubs are starting to pop up for uh some of your bigger squads so Hopefully that will translate uh, to more of these guys being able to continue their development uh, in states and, and keep them in the NBA sphere. So that's my thought, man. Good luck to Cole Swider. I'm um, happy we did what we did there. You know, I think the Lakers are thinking like I'm thinking. Um, as far as I can tell, that's just fudge is who you keep. The Moy Hodge He's too good on both sides of the floor, especially with the catch and shoot ability. We talk about guys who need to play off the ball. He's exactly that. I mean, that's a no brainer for this era. You need him. All teams need him. We're just lucky to have him. And when we showcase him, we're going to show um, that that he's the type of piece that you probably want as your off guard in general. I really do believe that. Your Kaysan Wallace's, Demoy Hodge, those are the type of guys. Um, you know, uh, Dweek Whitehead, those are the type of dudes that you want on your team who are just so equipped at catching and shooting, so incredibly good at playing off ball for some of these incredible guards who are likely going to both score and assist they need dudes who can just catch and shoot jordan hawkins people like that they need these guys so yeah that's that's what i see coming there uh, 
So, that's pretty much my thought. I think Cole Swider's going to be in this league because of that. It's what I want to get around to saying as well. So, that's my thought. BDF44, I appreciate everybody for rocking with me. I'm out.